guys. The Arctis headset from Steel Series are finally here. We have received so many requests to take a look at these. I have the 3, the 5, and the 7. Today we're taking a look at the 5, uh, simply because it's in that sweet price point of $99. Let's see how it stacks up based on all the claims of the best microphone on the gaming headset and other claims that are related to esports that we are gonna ignore. So let's see how they stack up right after this. Explore your future with the Cosmos 2 case and celebrate 25 years of ambition that drives Cooler Master forward. Enjoy the familiar yet still forward-looking character of the frame with solid aluminum handles. It may be the most physical you'll ever get with the computer case, but it's all worthwhile. Or get creative with any of the 13 storage options that encourage outside-the-box thinking. Meanwhile, the curved tempo glass panels on both sides ensures a lasting impression. Classically trained, but still ready for anything. The Cooler Master Cosmos 2. Let's celebrate the past by building for the future. Alright, so at $99, the Arctis 5 is competitively priced compared to like the GSP 300 from Sennheiser, which are awesome. And they're priced also the same as the newest member of the G series from Logitech, the G433, or the very well known HyperX Cloud 2. So the body is very light and it's made entirely of plastic, but nothing creaks, which is good, and I do like the matte coating. There's this one visible joint point, though, between the two plastic pieces on the headband that I wish was smooth, you know, but it's not a big deal. The headband is a two-piece design with an adjustable fabric that is available in multiple colors, and it supports the headset pretty well for small to medium-sized heads. But for example, if you expand the fabric piece for a larger head, it will be the plastic headband that will hold the headset and not the fabric. For me personally, the size adjustment is fine even with lots of hair, but because the ear cups swivel to sit on your neck like this, it's a bit tighter than I want and the fabric could be slightly smoother because if there's any movement, it's just not pleasant. Also, you have to get into a habit of removing the headset with both hands, otherwise uh, the joint on one side or the other absorbs the weight and the rotation of the headset, which in the long run I think might cause the joint to fail. The ear cups, however, feel quite nice on the skin, unlike the fabric on the headband. They can breathe, and there's the angle drivers inside the ear cup for better audio uh, direction. My only point of feedback would be to add more padding in the center of the ear cup to avoid any contact with the plastic housing underneath it. On the left side, we get a mic mute button that sticks out and is easy to find, plus a red LED uh, is visible on the mic itself when you mute it, which is awesome. There's also a volume wheel right here uh, that has very little travel, but it completely mutes the volume at the minus position. Then there's the USB connection and a 3.5mm input jack that is used for audio sharing, which is kind of strange. So you can plug in a set of headphones and that person will hear what you hear. I cannot think of a situation where I would personally use this feature to like audio share with a buddy or something, but let me know what you think of this in the comments below. All right, so this is what the microphone sounds like on the Arctis 5. I think it sounds good, good low-end pickup. It's not nasally, clear vocals. There's only a tiny bit of digital noise in the background when noise reduction is disabled. So right now it's on medium, and if I stop speaking, there's only a tiny bit of digital noise that you can hear. Also keep in mind, the microphone will still be on even if it's inserted inside the headset, and to avoid bursting any eardrums if your volume is maxed out and people are listening to you, avoid handling the microphone because all that is severely picked up. It's just unpleasant. Keep the distance to the microphone because it is sensitive. You know, don't eat the microphone. But yeah, very happy with the mic. Now let's hear how it compares to the GSP 300. So this is the GSP 300, another $99 gaming headset. Now the input for the microphone is different. This is going directly into my motherboard versus the Arctis 5 handles all the processing in its own USB DAC. So take that into account. There is more digital noise here because I have not applied any uh, noise reduction in uh, the motherboard software, but I think I prefer the sound of this one a little bit better. It's more natural, it's more clean. It's not as processed as uh, what we hear on the Arctis 5, but still, very acceptable like a microphone on both headsets and I would prefer the convenience of a single port like a USB plug it into your uh, computer and you're good to go 
In the package, we get the headphone cable, a 3.5 millimeter adapter, and the USB sound card that also acts as your chat audio mixer. So if you use TeamSpeak or Skype or other communication applications while gaming, this is a very good way to either, uh, let's say, mute your chat so that all you hear is the game, or you can just go directly into your communications, muting the game completely, or go into that middle and play around with that balance. So it's a nice thing to have. Plus, it's a very fitting feature to have for a gaming headset. Just double check that your playback devices are configured properly. I do like the modularity aspect of the 5, but this also introduces many points of failure. And the main headphone cable is using the not so common USB mini B8 pin cable. So if you're plugging this into your phone or a game controller, you need to use the 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter that is a four pole plug and will carry the microphone signal as well. And because of both USB and analog connections, it is cross-platform compatible, but the RGB lighting of course requires that USB connection, which by the way is very tasteful. I know it's totally unnecessary on a gaming headset and I wish I could disable the SteelSeries logo, but the thin ambient strip around the ear cups is uniform, so it's very visual visually appealing and can be configured with a few motion effects and per side color control or they can be completely disabled. In terms of audio performance, I think it's a fun headset, really nice detailed sound signature without any harsh treble. The bass is fine, still allowing those deep hits to come through without overpowering the rest of the frequencies. And because this is run through USB, there is enough power so that you don't have to worry about, oh, is the volume too low? And plus, uh, the very good thing is there's no distortion at higher volumes. Plus, we have very good stereo imaging for spatial orientation. The sound stage is a bit small compared to what I get on my game one. So in Battlegrounds, for example, you can pinpoint where the distant fire is coming from, but you don't get that sense of that super large environment. <sighs> so I could hear that player sneaking below me and waiting for me to come down, and I knew exactly where he was, but then my aim failed me. And so for competitive play, it's very good because the stereo spatial detail is excellent, but as soon as you enable that surround sound with DTSX, <sighs> It just completely falls apart in the audio department. So with DTSX enabled, we lose all detail separation. So there's no longer these elements that you can pinpoint and hear exactly what's happening. It's like a soup of audio without those distinct elements. Many important audio cues like your footsteps, other people's footsteps, incoming fire direction gets completely destroyed. You lose positional awareness. You do gain a bit of that larger sense of the environment, but with the compromise of completely destroying the proper sound signature. And this makes me angry because am I the only one who thinks surround sound should die? You get much better positional accuracy and much better sound stage and much better detail element separation in your audio cues in stereo mode and there's no need to cripple very good drivers on this headset with virtual software surround sound. And in the week I've been playing around with this headset I've experienced a few hiccups such as disconnection issues from the main USB port where the headset would light up the USB uh, sound card would light up, but the headset would not actually show up in the software nor in the properties until I restart my system. I've also experienced this weird volume glitch where the volume both on the headset and then the software was maxed out, but I was not able to hear it maxed out. It was kind of low and quiet and it would only fix itself when I would move the slider back and forth uh, and then back to 100%. Both of these issues luckily seem to be software related. So the volume glitch only happened once uh, while the headset disconnection issue happened to me twice in the week I've had this thing. Be ready for X299 with ASRock's flagship gaming i9 motherboard, the world's first to feature a Quantia 10 gigabit per second LAN port for extreme bandwidth, a 13-phase power design for smooth power delivery and reliable overclocking, and of course, USB 3.1 Type-C that can also charge your devices of up to 36 watts. More info in the description below. So for conclusion, I think SteelSeries have done a good job making sure to check off as many of those marketing points as possible for that sweet $99 price point, really tasteful RGB aluminum nice design, matte black coating, aside from this uh, weird little joint point there. Comfortable, multiple headband colors, so, you know, little customization options. Really good microphone, uh, also because it's going through USB, nice noise reduction in there. You know, the only concern would be for the size because they don't expand and they only rely on this top fabric headband for size expansion, which might be an issue for larger heads. But 
for $20 less, the Arctis 3 may be a better option simply because it's an identical headset in every way, aside from not having that USB sound card that also acts as your chat um, sound mixer thingy. So if you want to save yourself 20 bucks and get a really good stereo sound, get the Arctis 3 if you don't care about the RGB illumination because this is just plain $79, good sound, good microphone, recommended. And so that's it. I've enjoyed my time with the Arctis 5. Uh, the RGB illumination, ask yourself if it's worth the $20 and also because of that USB connection, it is more convenient for laptop users and maybe for those who don't have good onboard audio, that is of course your best bet. Uh, but uh, it's not perfect and I'm not giving it in the word because they're selling it as a surround sound headset without the proper maybe software equalizer tuned in to make sure that it delivers. Uh, but in stereo mode, let's say if this was just a stereo gaming headset, it would get my award because uh, in stereo it's just fantastic. In surround sound, it's not. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out these other relevant videos here and we'll see you in maybe one of these.